guys ever gone home, looked at yourself in the mirror, and realized you had a big chunk of food stuck in your teeth? You had been walking around the entire day, and no one said anything. That happened to me the other day. You know, I was talking to one of my friends, and thank God she pointed out that I had a black seed from my poppy seed bagel from breakfast stuck in my tooth. It was, in it was incredibly embarrassing, but it brought me back to a day Sarong and I were with a couple of friends in San Francisco. We were just coming back from the Day Young Museum of Fine Arts when we got kind of hungry and went out to get some burgers and fries. Were they so good? Um, since we were in San Francisco, we decided, why not let's explore the city? It's a beautiful day. Let's have some fun. We're at a crosswalk waiting for the light to turn when a homeless woman kind of just came out of nowhere and just waiting for the light to turn as well. We didn't really pay much attention to her. I did not even realize she was there until one of our friends pointed out she had blood on the back of her pants. This woman was on her period. She was, her blood was sleeping through her pants. She was spotting. We kind of looked at each other like, what the heck? I just stood there gaping at this stranger. I was so uncomfortable. I was incredibly awkward. And if I felt like that, how was I supposed to approach this lady and make her feel comfortable? Let her know her situation without making her feel embarrassed or ashamed. We ended up walking away, avoiding her entirely. It was really one of the most unpleasant experiences, I have to say. Yeah, I speak for the both of us when I say I deeply regret that day. Because that woman probably looked down and wondered, why didn't anybody tell me? She probably felt embarrassed just like you and I would if we found out we had food stuck in our teeth. Maybe even more. Sarong and I chose to ignore her. And our actions only enforce the global befalification of menstruation, the taboo of periods. In my Indian ethnic background, menstruation is a very sensitive and extremely private subject. I grew up in a house with three women. The first time I actually saw a menstrual product was at school when I was 13 years old. There are some cultures in India where when a woman's on her menstrual cycle, she is forbidden from entering the kitchen, performing any household duties, entering the temple, or even performing any ritualistic activities and participating in ritual, ritual events because she's deemed unclean. Actress Meghan Markle recently traveled to India and she found that girls find it really hard to actually go to school because they feel embarrassed about their periods because they don't have facilities like we do in America. They don't have you know, clean restrooms sometimes. They don't have menstrual products at hand. Because of this, girls end up missing over 140 days of school and 23% of those girls end up not getting the education that they deserve because of menstruation. In the Hebrew Bible, it refers to menstruation. There is a word that they call, it translates to um, being ritually impure, tama. Scripture claims that when a woman is on a period, she is impure. And anyone who would be able to physically interact with this woman would also be impure. And they would require to have ritualistic purification. And women in Nepal, when they're on their periods, the community exiles them. And they're forced to live in huts. Recently, a girl, a teenage girl, died in one of these huts by being bitten by a snake. Her punishment for menstruating was death. All of this injustice because of the world's misconception and ignorance. Historically, it was believed that babies conceived during menstruation were ill or possessed, and that if a man's penis touched menstrual blood, it would burn off. That makes me laugh. <laughs> you know, it's ridiculous to you and me, and it can be argued, you know, we're past that. We're past all those myths. We're an advanced society now, but some of it still holds weight. Because if we break down these myths to their simplest ideology, that menstruation is disgusting and that women should be ashamed, the standards have not changed. But in fact, menstruation is a completely natural and beautiful, complex bodily function. And if anything, it's clean. Menstruation is basically a 28-day cycle to which on day 14, an egg is released 
from the ovaries um, uh, and it enters the uterus, to which where it can be either uh, fertilized or remain unfertilized. An unfertilized egg attaches itself to the endometrium, also known as the uterine lining. Throughout the cycle, the endometrium sheds, and the shedding is actually the blood that you see that comes out of the vagina. It's really, that's it. It's like spring cleaning for the uterus. <laughs> <laughs> Women, or rather anyone who experienced menstruation, including those of the LGBTQ community, the gender queer, use products such as pads, tampons to absorb blood, and cups to capture blood. But these menstrual products also hold their own stigma. In Mexico, my motherland, we love to hold women to a double standard. We're very traditional and we're very Catholic, but we tend to over-sexualize our women in media. Big touristy cities like Cancun and Mexico sell tampons, but for the rest of Mexico, they don't even have an adopted word for tampon. When I tried to explain to the woman that ran one of three markets in my hometown, she was utterly disgusted by the idea of a cotton tube being inserted into the vagina. I was really confused and I asked one of my family friends and she explained to me embarrassed, you know, a lot of Mexican families do not let their daughters wear tampons because it simulates premarital sex and it takes away their purity. These women, even if they're independent and they, use, they can use tampons because they're more convenient or comfortable, don't because the tampon is simply over-sexualized. In our own country, Menstruation is used to degrade and to humiliate women. In the last presidential debate, Donald Trump, in response to Megyn Kelly's critical inquiries, remarked, blood coming out of her, whatever. These, this attitude was established by men thousands upon thousands of years ago. Through their ignorance, their misogynistic agendas, their fear of women, in regard to the fact that women can carry a life and men can't. They just had this idea, and we have been culturally conditioned to carry these ideas. But why? Why is that attitude still here? But this can be fixed. We can start by implementing menstrual education and sex ed curriculum that's already being taught to classes as young as fifth grade. We can also start by obliterating policies that target women, like the tampon tax. The tampon tax puts a value-added tax on menstrual products. But pads are a necessity, not a luxury. And in we, until we can see that difference, we're not going to move past this problem. If we do move past this problem, there can be social change. We can desexualize tampons. We can have more government-funded facilities where a woman can get free gynecological care where she can get a pap smear just as easily as getting a flu shot from Walgreens. So you see, the age of ignorance must end. We need to start treating menstruation as a normal, healthy bodily function. Hopefully today we educated you a little bit more and inspired you not to turn a blind on, eye on this problem any longer. Today we add to the conversation of menstruation, but it's really today that we are ending it. Now it is only time for action. Menstruation is not what the world says it is. It is human. Thank you. Thank you.